Mackey here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. We're going to launch into our podcast. No big deal. Here we go. <laughs> it's Pat and JT Podcast. It's Pat and JT. Oh, I didn't even notice I did that. I said launch into our podcast. I didn't even realize I did that. Oh, it's Pat wow. and JT on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. <laughs> I guess just having um, our friend Clayton Anderson, astronaut, um, on Skype with us, it just <clears throat> launch, just comes out of me. Right. Launch. Hi, Clay. Hey, guys. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> nice. My, that's awesome. I love that. The screen right now, he's got, oh, there's a little astronaut floating around on his screen. What is that? Keep that going. It's an astronaut floating around on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Here, do that again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to video that. He go wants there. to get a picture of you. There you go. Wow. <laughs> is that government funded also? Uh, everything in my house is government funded, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. As it Fair should enough. be. As it should be. So huge weekend this weekend. We'll get to, let's get to the particulars first, and then we'll find out what you've been up to. Um, but you were you were all over the place this weekend. Uh, a lot of celebrations. I was actually asked to do a whole lot more, but I had to turn them down. I had a um, speaking engagement last weekend, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, in the uh, great cities of Ashland, Norfolk, and Grand Island. Nice. Then I went to Kearney to do an event in Kearney at the library. Uh, then I flew home Thursday morning to Houston to hop back on a plane to fly to Omaha to go to the museum in Ashland to do a couple days of things there. And then uh, yesterday I preached my first sermon uh, at Webster Presbyterian Church in Webster, Texas, the Church of the Astronauts. Is it truly the Church of the Astronauts? Yeah, the, the way the story goes is it was one of the original churches in the area back then. And... Um, Many of the early engineers and astronauts like John Glenn, Buzz Aldrin, um, were all members there. Uh, I'd see Bassett. I can't, I can't remember his first name, but anyway. And then I would join later. Uh, Susan and I were married there, <clears throat> and wow. I became a deacon and an elder, and I played the organ there, and I sang in the church choir. So uh, she and I attended for about 25 years. <clears throat> oh, wow. When you were up in uh, on the International Space Station for so long, did you... Uh, you know, kind of communicate with the church while you're up there? Yeah, they actually, I had them send me um, files, you know, not physical DVDs, but they sent the files of the church services every Sunday. And then um, the pastor at that time was Mark Cooper, and he came to crew quarters before I launched into space, and we did a private uh, communion service in my uh, bunk Mm -hmm. uh, at crew quarters in Houston before I took off to go to the Cape. So That's cool. Yeah, it was a cool weekend, cool week. I wish I could. I was asked to go to uh, in New York and be on a Fox TV show, and I had to turn them down because I was in Norfolk, Nebraska. I mean, that's more uh-huh. important. You know, so a lot of those opportunities presented themselves, but I had to pass. So, what'd you preach about? I mean, doing your first sermon that'd be uh, be in pretty intense. What was your uh, yeah. subject? Well, the title was "Do Your Part." And it was based on the idea that, um, you know, when we put humans on the moon and brought them back safely for the first time, people were expected to do their part. So uh, in today's world, I think that um, me being a person of faith, uh, the job is to do your part. And God has given you all the skill set that you need. And any, you know, a reference material is the Bible. So uh, yeah. all you have to do is do the right thing, right? Treat people right. Talk to people right. Uh, show your faith just by doing the right thing. Yeah, I heard. Well, based on the comments that I saw on the Facebook page, everybody seemed to really enjoy your sermon. <laughs> hey, it wasn't you know it wasn't thirty minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Give the audience what they want, get right? In, get out. <laughs> exactly. Is that a bird behind you? Is that a bird? That's Astro, the African gray <laughs> parrot. I'm sorry, I cannot do anything about Astro. He probably knows I'm on Skype with my favorite two people. <laughs> In all of Omaha, Nebraska, and so he's letting you know that he's approving of Ast- what we're doing. Astro, about. great name. Astro dude. the bird. I love it. <laughs> love it. So basically, this is me giving you the bird. I got it. I got it. I like how you operate. <laughs> well, we should mention, too, this last weekend, obviously, I, I mean, right now people know, but if people are li- listening uh, down the road, that this last weekend was the 50th anniversary of landing on the moon. Um, and those first steps on the moon and, mm-hmm. and talking about doing your part. I saw a lot of great stories this weekend about that, talking about the 400,000 people that it took to actually from top to bottom to make that Jeez. happen. Um, and that's from the people who, 
uh, took care of the, the janitors in the building that then to build everything. And you made mention of something when you were talking on one of the uh, one of the programs that I caught um, about walking in when you first became an astronaut and you walk in and everything's there. And then yeah. realizing what it was like when the other when the very first astronauts walked in. Yeah, it's it's very humbling to me. Um, you know, when I became an astronaut in 1998 and flew in 2007 and yada, 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 so much had gone on. So much had been proven, figured out, um, designed, corrected. I knew pretty well that when I became an astronaut, the odds were really good that I would come home to my family at night and that I would come home to my family after my mission. But man, if you think about uh, the folks that launched in the Mercury, Gemini and Apollo days, uh, unbelievable. It wasn't that way, right? It, these guys were doing things on rockets that were uh, not as well tested. They were life was way more dangerous, as was proven by the Apollo One fire. And but the fact that we figured it out and we sent all those humans to the moon effectively, it just goes to show you that spaceflight is a team sport. Mm -hmm. And um, it, just like in a football game, right? If if every all the 11 people don't do their job on any given play. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I love sports, so I love sports analogies, and my little pea brain can <laughs> figure stuff out. Would like you that. have had the seeds to do that back then, back and be like one of the first guys to test? 1968 instead yeah. of 1998? Yeah. Oh, hard to say. Um, you know, those guys were also all jet fighter pilots, right? Then they were also flying airplanes that were somewhat experimental and and uh true you know as a kid uh, at that time in my life you know in my college age and things like that i don't know if i had the cojones to <laughs> to do that sort of thing um small town kid from nebraska i wasn't exposed to uh, a whole lot of that type of thinking right right that, right where you just go can I say balls out? Yep. Sure. <laughs> it's a podcast. <laughs> all, pe all preachers hey, say balls, balls out. out. Yeah, that's right. right. That's what preachers say. Yeah, they say <laughs> balls out. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It's pretty amazing. I, just listening to you talk about that and and uh, kind of put it in perspective that and back then they had to build everything. Like you said, that mm -hmm. mission control was there when you got right. there. They didn't yeah, have a was, mission control. To those guys, I mean, holy that's cow. crazy. They didn't even have the Johnson Space Center wasn't even there. It was a bunch <laughs> of cow dung, you know? <laughs> And uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they come down and all these people pick up their families and move to the swamp infested, humidity laden, mosquito driven <laughs> Houston, Texas coastline. Right. And they all start to live here and they build houses and roads and restaurants and banks. And and, and then they start building mission control and the, uh, the buildings that had the science stuff in it and all that. I mean, it's just crazy it to is. me uh, and just another testament to what we as Americans can do when we put our minds to it and when we focus together mm -hmm. as a team and, and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so this so this last weekend, like you said, you were really busy. You got more, uh, more appearances still coming up in the near future? Uh, I have uh, this week off. Uh, I think I have next week off. And my wife's uh, birthday is coming up on the 27th. So our daughter's headed to Italy. Wow. What's she doing there? Yep. That's kind of her uh, graduation present. She has a, a foreign exchange student that she went to high school with here in Houston. And she moved back to her home in Italy. So Sutton's going to go over there and uh, tag up with her for 10 days oh, or that'd so. That would be awesome. Oh, I, I would yeah. love. That's one place I really would love to see. Um, oh, yeah. Mm, we got wow. to go after STS-120, and it's a pretty amazing place. So I highly recommend it. Absolutely. Um, pasta is excellent. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if you're keto, do not go to Italy. It I will leave out. my keto in in Nebraska. Yeah, <laughs> not a problem. That's, that's a cheat week for post keto activity. Hell yes, <laughs> absolutely, man. That's awesome. Hey, did you happen to catch the video? I and I tell you what, honestly, it just made me. I was so proud of him, but I felt awful that uh, for Buzz Aldrin, uh, wasn't it Buzz? smack that guy that what was it i saw it but i didn't hear what it was about why'd he punch him so it's it goes back several years and uh the guy is a the the people person behind the camera or whatever or, you know the people that were accosting buzz mm -hmm. um were non-believers in uh americans going to the moon right so he's talking smack to buzz 
mm-hmm. and uh, flat earthers or what, whatever the heck they were, oh, conspiracy <laughs> theorists. But anyway, <laughs> Buzz is very patient for a while, and he listens to this guy talk smack, and the guy keeps coming closer to him and yakking at him, and pretty soon Buzz just reaches back and smacks him. <laughs> 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 and, and I remember I had never seen the, the video either several years ago. And uh, I tweeted that or met, wrote an answer on Quora because somebody said, what do you think of when Buzz Aldrin smacked that guy? And I said, I was more proud of him than I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> I was yeah. too. I was just like, yes, <laughs> when I saw that, it made me feel idiot. So, I know, just just so disrespectful. Uh, right. Yes, exactly. And and there are some so many nutballs out there uh, that yeah. vote. That yep, vote, right. That vote. <laughs> Great. Amen. You know, but God bless America. There you go. This is yeah. true. It takes all kinds. We know it. We know it more than most countries know it. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you ever it was, sit- it's a great video, and, and yeah. Buzz just popped him a good one. And, uh, of course, what happens is Buzz starts to get in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Because he, But it, it all went away, and uh, now it's just part of that historical fabric that we love to turn back to and <laughs> that we'd all love to do to those stupid flat earthers. Part of the, it's part of the 50th anniversary now. That's yeah, right. that's right. It's all part of it. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing. That's for sure. Oh my God. So any more books coming out? Well, funny. You should that's say that. So that's so odd. <laughs> I have a, a new children's book coming out in 2020. Uh, it's with the publishers or the editors publishers right now. Um, the the work will start in earnest now. I think I sent the manuscript, the most recent manuscript, in a couple months ago, and then she went and got pregnant and had a baby. Wow, <laughs> so that's rude. I know. Can you so rude. That? You have a timetable. Uh, well, they do apparently. But, uh, so they told me that uh, they're looking to do it in 2020. Um, Right now, it, it doesn't necessarily have a title. It's uh, called Letters from Space, and it's a children's book. So I'm very excited. It will be, um, according to the plan, it will be one of those books that has a letter and a big illustration on the two pages, and then you turn, there'll be another letter and a big illustration. The idea is that people sent me letters when I lived in space. That's the premise. And then I respond in the book to those letters. So, for example... Uh, one of them is, hey, Joey, I heard you got a new puppy. Congratulations. You know, we can't have puppies in space because Aww. they poop and pee. You know. <laughs> That's cool. That's a great great so concept. It's, it's um, And it'll have a science bent to it in that many of the uh, letters are fun, uh, but they'll have maybe a small science principle in there for the kids to pick up on. Nice. How many copies have you sold of A is for Astronaut? Uh, I think the last time I knew it was over seven. 17,000. Jeez. That's really cool. That's huge. So when when, when are one of these books going to be made into a movie? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I want a cartoon uh, that I want a cartoon for kids. that's based on one of your books. I love that. That would be cool. I'll, I'll mention that to the powers that be. I think you should. Yeah. I think you have any connections for me. (laughs) Um, I'll, I'll see if we can find a power that bees. <laughs> a drawing power that bees. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I could just imagine a little cartoon clay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right? Introducing the, 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 you know, maybe every time you, you open it kind of like, uh, I don't know. I, I just I just have this vision in my head of a little cartoon clay. and, and That's a great idea. Making a cartoon out of it. Kind of like Schoolhouse Rocks kind of thing. There yeah. you go. I'm, I'm up for anything. That'd be awesome. <laughs> hey, so... We know that what, in the next couple of years, they're planning on sending another manned mission to the moon, 2024. right? 2024. 2024. What are right. they, what are they, what, what's that going to look like? And what are they going to experience when they, how long are they going to stay? What's that going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh, well, those are great questions that I'm not sure uh, at this point in my career, I'm qualified to answer. I do know that they use the principle of the gateway, they call it, where the current plan is to build a small space station in orbit around the moon which will allow astronauts to travel to that space station, live and work on that space station on science things. And then it will have somehow the capability to get astronauts to and from the surface of Mars. Now, after that, I really don't know much about what the big plan is. Uh, If it were me, I would want 10 to 20 humans living on the lunar surface for a period of time that extends months just so that we can begin to figure out the things, the infrastructure, the technology that we're going to need to do the same thing on Mars since it's so far away. 
That's that's awesome. And, and that's just crazy. the whole I'm so glad to hear that they're going back and they want to stay there for a while um, just to, to learn more about the you know because the moon i mean let's start there let's learn some more it obviously went there once but that's not enough you know it's like <laughs> right let's learn some more and and uh, do some like you said do some science stuff i like the name of the project isn't artemis right right the twin sister of apollo i think thank you that's what i was looking for oh. greek mythology i knew there was a there's a connection there um but that i think that sounds that sounds great i was glad to hear they were going to do it actually i was on nasa's website um, last week, because we, well, we we're talking about getting you in here and, and having a chance to talk to you on our podcast. And so that led me to, to NASA's website. And of course, there's a lot of great stuff because of the anniversary. And one of the things I've never seen this before, but they have this whole deal about the moon. And it's about this project, as a matter of fact, talking about it, but the surface of the moon, they said, is kind of like flour. And I'm like, Oh, oh. yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's very gnarly <laughs> flour because <laughs> it's made of uh, small shards of metal, tiny shards of metal what? and rock, right? So with no uh, atmosphere, no wind, nothing to blow things around or to, to uh, as on Earth, you know, the sand on the beaches is smooth. You can walk on it for the most part, yeah, right? Because they've been eroded to be smooth at the edges and, and that doesn't exist on the moon. So there's a lot of... Uh, these pieces that are very sharp. And uh, so one of the things we need to learn is how to deal with that sort of thing. Uh, you know, if it gets in your engine or it gets in your parts or whatever, it's probably not a good thing. So yeah. Pers personal or machine parts. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it in your parts. <laughs> None of your parts. Exactly. <laughs> don't want it around your booster rockets. There. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, so got a lift today. <laughs> It worse. <laughs> uh, so, Clay, when you, um, how long, you're in uh, International Space Station for how, how many days? Uh, 151 days, 18 hours, 23 minutes, and 14 seconds. When you first wow. got back to Earth, did, did you feel like you weighed, like your arms and your legs were so heavy being in zero gravity for so long? How, what did it feel like? Oh, yeah. When I landed, uh, well, the first time I knew, noticed it, I was laying on my back in the mid-deck of the shuttle Discovery because I was the last one to get uh, removed from the shuttle. And so when they first made me sit up, it was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was dizzy. I thought I was going to puke. And I weighed 200 pounds again. You know, I hadn't weighed that in five months. And so every time I moved was uh, an effort. Uh, I finally got out of the hatch, and two uh, flight doctors had me – uh, one arm on each of their shoulders, right? And they kind of took me into the uh, transport van to go back to the uh, crew quarters in the science area. So I was very heavy for a long time. I remember waking up the next morning and when I went in to shave, I had to hold my right arm with the razor. I had to hold it up with my left arm Jeez. and I kind of put it against the side of my face and then let go with my other arm and my arm just dropped down the side and oh took a nice swath out of my beard. <laughs> Oh, man. And then I'd lift it up again, do it again. And, and of course, getting into the shower that morning was uh, a very exciting. It would have made for a very exciting video. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it would have. I bet it would have. Because you're searching for things to grab onto. Yeah. To pull you up so you can maneuver your way into this little shower at astronaut crew quarters at the Kennedy Space Center. But I made it in and I found, discovered uh, that the thinking people at NASA had placed a chair in my shower, which was amazingly oh. smart. Yes. <laughs> Great idea. So I turned on the hot water, plopped down, and I didn't move for 37 minutes. <laughs> oh, I bet that felt so good just to sit there. It, it did. <laughs> it was like the most amazing shower I ever had. I know, oh kind of God. along the same lines. When I uh, had I had a cast on I my leg. I even said that. And I know kind how of you... Along the same kind of along lines. the same lines. <laughs> Uh, I, I got my cast taken off with after my Achilles tendon surgery, and I sat in the bathtub and sat in the shower in a bathtub and just cried for about 12 minutes. It felt so good. It was fantastic. The, the only difference between me and you is you played with your little uh, floaty boats and your little yeah. uh, shower mm -hmm. tub toys. Aren't you supposed to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you couldn't lift yours. That's true. That's yeah. true. There you go. That's Touché. right. Touché. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. So coming up this next week um, in Ashland, Saunders County Fair is going on, getting ready to kick off. Um, do, do you miss coming to the fair? Miss being in Saunders County, going up to Wahoo? Well, I just miss watching uh, 
uh, this girl I used to know in high school who rode horses and stuff in the rodeo. <laughs> Some hot chick? I... Many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Bring it right back around talking about the moon <laughs> many moons ago Yeah, when that happened. <laughs> yeah, but we're getting ready to go up there. Uh, Mom and dad getting ready to go up to the fair as well. And so take them cool. up there. So I will tell them hi for you. So I know they always Absolutely. love reading about everything that you've been doing and all the things that you're up to. You and you're, Are you going to golf later today? You just thought we're going to golf this morning, but later today maybe? No, well, it's raining here now, and the the gentleman that I typically play with, um, he pretty much booted me out and got another fourth. So tomorrow we're playing. Are you Are you good? Am I good? Yeah. At what? Getting booted out? <laughs> yeah. Are you a scratch golfer? Oh, I scratch a lot. Remember we talked about that on the oh, moon and the circus. Yeah, really that's right. Sharp. Your parts. <laughs> that's right. Forgot about that. <laughs> no, I mean I love the game. Um, what I need to do and what I want to do is when my wife finally retires, she wants to learn golf. So I want to do one of those two week golf trips where you, yeah. uh, you go and you take lessons every day. Yes. Um, Cause I just need to, I'm pretty athletic, I guess, even for an old fart. And, um, <laughs> I just need to refine some aspects of my game. Cause I want to take Larry, the cable guy's place at all those pro-ams one day when he can't awesome. play anymore. That's right. Awesome, awesome idea. It's a good goal. I've looked into some of those packages that you're talking about too because it, it looks really fun. Like it's a week or two week. There's some in North Carolina. That would be fun. Um, okay. Some of those beautiful golf courses where you can stay. It's just, yeah, and you fun. just immerse yourself in it. That would be awesome. I would love Cause that. Because that's what I, because if I go take, my wife has gotten me lessons before, you know, and I go take lessons and, but then <clears throat> the difficulty is, is you have a lesson and then the guy says, hey, you know, go practice for a week. Well, yep. <laughs> my issue with that is that Tiger Woods, he, when he was learning, you know, he didn't practice for a week by himself. He, you know, the good guys, the guys that are good, typically practice with someone who knows what is right and, and wrong, watching their swing and stuff, so that they're constantly being corrected. And I need that for a couple of weeks, I think. To yeah. Get my- it, funny you mentioned that because they were just talking about him after this weekend. He kind of had a rough go of it, and um, they were talking about his his uh, his routine earlier when he was younger, and it's not the same anymore. But he would go out and he'd hit balls for like four or five hours, and then he'd go play thirty six, and then oh, he go and then he'd go to the gym. Jeez. You know, and it's like that's but that was his job. And Jeez. Um, he was he he had made mention of that because he was having a rough go. And one of the reporters was asking him about the, the game not being the same, his wow. game not being the same. And he's like, well, I don't have the time to do that anymore. And somebody not at that moment, but somebody was commenting on his comment saying, but that's still his job. That's what you should be doing every day. You know, it's kind of like that's your job. That's, that's yeah. the only thing so you, you got to do. do. You got to do it. But uh, seriously, that's a lot hitting four or five hours a day and then play 36. And does he get a cart, yeah. a cart or walk? I guarantee <laughs> you he walks. Cart. <laughs> I'm all cart. I'm all, I'm all, all a cart. <laughs> All a la carte. All day long. Well, Clay, thank you so much for coming on the podcast with us. It's always my pleasure. I can't believe it took us so long to hook up. I know. I know. Next time you get up this direction, if we can we'll grab a hold of you, we'd love to have, have you come by the studio. Okay. I would love to do that. Perfect. Super. Thanks, Clay. Thanks, you guys. Love you. See you, buddy. Love you, too. Love you, too. See ya. Uh, Clayton Bye Anderson, now. our Nebraska not, and been a friend of our show for a very, very long time. Very smart person. Can't believe it. I mean, that, that was in 07 when he went up the and first we, time right. that he, and we were, we almost got to go. We were, uh, yeah, we, he invited us. We were on the list to go, yeah. and we couldn't get um, off of work. I think we, we had to broadcast things. at Saul's or something. There, <laughs> there was something super important. Something came up, and anyway, somebody, yeah, right? Mm. Anyway, not bitter. Not bitter at all. Hindsight not at all. being twenty twenty, oh, though, we God. would have skipped right? everything to go see a uh, shuttle launch. How amazing would that have been? Especially without our glasses or contacts. That's right. Thank you, Kugler Vision. Uh, Kugler Vision is a supporter of our podcast, and we're very happy about that. Believe me. If you would like to drop the contacts, ditch the glasses, maybe you've been thinking about doing that procedure but you were just a little hesitant. You don't need to be brave like an astronaut because it's no. nothing. It's like a what's, what a nothing burger. I don't know what that means, but it means it's One nothing. One of my least favorite words. Seriously, because it's stupid. It's dumb. But when you go in for the consultation, they take you through all the tests and then you find out where you stand right now with your vision correction and what your options are. And if that's an option, you may be able to have the procedure done that very same day. How awesome is that? And let them know that you heard this um, on the Pat and JT podcast. Fill that in. Check the little box. 
Uh, we appreciate it and they appreciate it. Cooglervision.com. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search It's Pat and JT. Pat and JT Podcast. A Parkville Media Production.